welcome to another video of code wrestling and in this video we are going to learn how to solve a numerical based on single channel queuing system problem before continuing i would suggest you guys to solve the problem along with me for a better understanding so let's begin so a small grocery store has only one checkout counter the customer arrives at this checkout counter at random from 1 to 8 minute apart each has same probability of occurrence that means a customer can come to the checkout counter between 1 to 8 minutes now the service time varies from 1 to 6 minute apart each possible value of service time has same probability of occurrence that means if a customer arrives at the checkout counter then it will require a maximum of 6 minutes to give him the service now we have to develop the simulation distribution table for eight customers so what does that question exactly means so imagine there is a shop which has only one checkout counter so the probability of customer to arrive at the checkout counter is same and the value varies from 1 to 8 minutes similarly the service time required for each customer has also same probability with values varying from 1 to 6 minutes and at last we have to develop a simulation distribution table for eight customer also the question has provided us some random digits for arrival time as well as service time we will understand its use later in the video so let's see how to approach the problem so the first step is to determine the inter arrival time distribution table what is inter arrival time so let's say for example the first customer arrives at 7 o'clock and the second customer arrive at 8 o'clock so what is the inter arrival that means the difference between the timing that is 1 hour so that is what the inter arrival time distribution table so this is the first step the second step is to compute the arrival time from this inter arrival time distribution table okay let's say i assume that the first customer arrive at zeroth time okay let's assume it arrive at zero time now the second customer is going to come after 5 minutes so what is the arrival time of the second customer that will be 0 plus 5 that is the fifth minute so this is how we will compute the arrival time from the inter arrival time distribution table similarly we will calculate or determine service time distribution table and then compute the service time after doing all these four steps we will finally calculate simulation distribution table for eight customers so let's so coming to the first step that is calculating the inter arrival time distribution table here we have four columns first column is customer arrival time then probability of occurrence then cumulative probability and then random digit assignment as we know that the customer can arrive at the counter from 1 to 8 minute thus we have eight rows starting from 1 also it is mentioned that each customer has same probability of occurrence thus the probability will be 1 by 8 that is equals to 0.125 thus all the thus the entire column is filled with values 1 by 8 that is 0.125 now we will calculate cumulative probability which means that the probability of customer at a particular arrival time could be this value or less than that so obviously for the first arrival time it will be 0.125 that is same as this probability now for the second one it can have maximum of 0.125 plus 0.125 that is 0.250 now for the next that is the third arrival time it will be 0.250 plus 0.125 that is 0.375 then for the fourth one it will be 0.375 plus plus 0.125 that is 0.5 then for the fifth one it will be 0.5 plus 0.125 that is 0.65 and it goes on till 8 now we have to assign this random digits for each arrival time so you can just see the logic behind it it is very simple it was 0.125 we will start from 0 and assign it till 125 here it was 0.125 we will make it as 125 now we'll start from 126 that is the next digit just after this and it will goes go on till here it was 0.250 we'll make it till 250 then again we'll take the next value that is 251 here it is 0.375 we'll make it till 
then again 376 to 500, then 501 to 625, then 626 to 750, then from 751 to 875, and then 876 to 1000. So this was the first step to calculate the inter-arrival time distribution table. Now moving on to second step. Here we have to calculate the actual arrival time for each customer. Since we have to perform simulation for eight customers, thus we have eight rows here. Basically, we will be calculating arrival time for each customer. Now we will assign this random digits for arrival time. So this random digits given in the question to each customer in sequential manner. We always assume that the first customer arrive at time zero. Thus, we don't assign an, any random digit to it, but we will assign this random digits to further customers. Thus, now, if we will calculate the inter-arrival time, so obviously for the first customer, we didn't assign any random digits, so arrival time is zero. Now, for the second customer, the random digit was 913. It belongs to which category this? That is the inter-arrival time is eight. So inter-arrival time is eight. So what will be the arrival time? That is zero plus eight, that is equals to eight. Now for the third customer, the random digit is 727. 727 belongs to which? Six, that, that is the arrival time is, customer arrival time is six. We'll write six. So the final arrival time will be eight plus six. That is how much? 14. Thus, the, now, the, now the fourth customer will arrive at random digit. Now the four. Now the fourth customer has random digit 15. 15 belongs to which category first now first so thus the arrival time will be 14 plus 1 15 similarly for the fifth customer 948 948 belongs to what 8 so right over here 8 15 plus 8 23 then 309 309 belongs to third so 3 23 plus 3 that is 26 then 922 922 over here 8 8 plus 26 that is 34 and then 753, so 753 is here, 7 to 34 plus 7 is 41. So like this, we have computed the arrival time. So the customer arrival time for first, so the arrival time for the first customer is 0, for second customer is 8, for third is 14, and for fourth is 15, and it goes on like this. Now moving on to the third step, we have to calculate service time distribution table. So here again, the service time varies from 1 to 6 minutes apart. So we have six rows starting from one and also it is and also it is mentioned that the service time has same probability of occurrence thus probability over here is one by six that is how much 0.16 thus the entire column is filled with the value 0.16 again we have to calculate the cumulative probability similarly what we have done in inter arrival time distribution table add it it for the first one it will be 0.160 then for the second one, it will be 0.160 plus again 0.16, that is 0 0.320. Then again 0 0.320 plus 0.16, that is 0 0.480. Then 0 0.480 plus 0.16, that is 0 0.640 and goes on till the last value. And for the random digit assignment, obviously we'll start from 0. And here it is 0 0.16, we'll make it as 16. Then we'll start from 17 and maximum value is 0 0.32, we make it as 32. Again, we'll start from 33. Maximum value is 0 0.48, we'll make it as 48, then 49 to 64, then 65 to 80, then 81 to 96. Like this, we will calculate the service time distribution table. Now the next step is to compute the service time. So here we know that we have to perform simulation for eight customer, thus we have eight rows over here. Now we'll assign random values to each of this customer. Now if you remember, when we were calculating arrival time, we didn't assign any random digit to the first customer. Why? Because we have assumed that the first customer will come at time zero, but we don't know that how much time will it require to give the service to the first customer. Thus, we have to assign the random digit to the first customer to know what is the service time. Now we will calculate the service time. So the random digit we have assigned is according to the random digit given in the question sequentially. So the first customer has random digit 84, 84 belongs to this category 6. That means the first customer will require 6 minutes to get the service. For the second customer, it is random digit is 10, 10 belongs to this 1. That means the second customer will require a service of 1 minute. Now for the third, it is 74, 74 belongs to which category 5. Thus service time is 5. 
Similarly, for 4, 53, 53 is here in the fourth. We'll write 4 over here. For 5, it is 17. 17, 2. We'll write 2 over here. For 6, it is 79. So 79 belongs to this 5. So we'll write 5 over here. Then for the 7, we have 91. 91 belongs to 6. So we'll write 6 over here. Then for the 8, we have 67. 67 belongs to 5. Then we'll write 5 over here. So this is how we will compute service time. So now the next step is to calculate the simulation table for eight customers. So it has various columns, customer number, arrival time, service time, time service begins, waiting time in queue, time service ends, time customer spend in the system and idle time of the server. So all the columns are self explainable, but still. So let's say you have a checkout count, check counter. Now you went to the counter. So the time you went to the counter, that is your arrival time. Now, since there was a long queue and you have waited for some time, that's your waiting time in queue. Now, after waiting for some time, the cashier actually started giving you service. So that is your, that is what, at what time the service begins. Now, after giving you the service, the service was ended some time. So what is the time duration? That will, your, that will be your service time, the service time. And then when your entire cashier or the cashier has given you the final bill, that is what the time service ends. So how much time did you spend in the system? That will be your time customer spend in the system. And then the idle time of the server. This is basically whether the cashier was free or not. So this is how you can correlate it. Now we'll solve, we'll simulate it and you will understand it very well. So how many customer, eight customers. So we have given eight customers over there. Arrival time we have already calculated in the second step. This is what it is. The same values we have written over here. Service time we have calculated in the fourth step. The same values we have written over here. Now time service begins. So obviously when the first customer arrives, it arrives at zero. The cashier is free. So immediately it can provide its service. So zero waiting time, of course, zero. How long does it has provided the service for six minutes? So the time service end with and will also end at six minutes. How much time does, did customer spend in the system? Obviously it has spent six minutes in the system. So six was the cashier free? No. So zero like that. I hope you understood this now next. When the second customer is arriving, second customer is arriving at arrival time eight. Now, obviously the cashier was free at six minutes. So at, so if the customer is arriving at eight minutes, immediately it can provide the service. So it is providing the service at eight minutes itself. Did customer wait? No, it didn't. How long it has provided the service for one minute. So eight plus one nine. So this time service ends at nine minutes. How much time did customer spend? It has spent only one minute in the system. So one was the cashier free? Was the server was free? Yes. From between six to eight, the cashier was not doing any work. So thus the, it was free for two minutes. Now next. So the customer three is arriving at 14th minute. So obviously the, the server is free. Cashier is free. It can provide the service immediately. Uh, the customer didn't have to wait. So zero. Time service and how much time? Five minutes of service has been provided. So 14 plus five, that is how much? 19. Now, how much time did customer spend? So customer has spent a total of five minutes, obviously. And how long the cashier was free? Server was free. So server was free between nine to 14. So that means five minutes. Now the customer fourth has arrived. It arrived at 15th minute, but it has arrived at 15th minute, but the cashier was busy. And the cashier was free at 19th minute. So obviously this customer will be provided serviced at 19th minute. So the customer has to wait for four minutes. Yes, 19 minus 15. It has to wait for four minutes. And then how long the service has been provided for four minutes. So 19 plus four, how much? 23. So we have provided. So the service ends at 23. How much time did customer spend? So customer actually spent this four minutes of the service. Also, it has to wait for the four minutes. So the total will be eight minutes. So eight minutes the customer has spent in the system. Was the server ideal? Was the cashier ideal? No, it has continuously provided this provided the service. It wasn't free. Now for the customer five, the customer is arriving at 23. Yes, we can immediately provide the service as 23. Now did customer wait? No, zero. So obviously, and, and what time the service end? Two minutes, 23 plus two, 25. Then how much time did customer spend? Obviously for two minutes till the service time Two idle time zero immediately it has provided. Similarly for customer six, customer six is arriving at 26. Yes, immediately we can provide the service because the cashier is free at 25. So 26 did customer wait? No, not at all. How long for five minutes? 26 plus five. How much? 31. 
Now, how much time customer spent? Obviously, till this service time, five. Idle time, yes, between 25 to 26, one minute, it was idle, so one. Now, for the seventh customer, arrival time is 34. Yes, immediately we can provide the service, 34. Waiting time, zero. How long? Six minutes, 40. Then, how much time did customer spend till just the service time? That is six. Idle time, yes, it was idle between 34 to 31. That is three minutes to three. Now, for the eighth customer, the arrival time is 41. Huh. So, we can immediately provide the service, 41. Did customer wait? No, so zero. How long? 5 minutes, 41 plus 5 for 6. Customer time, time customer spent in the system, obviously 5. There is the service time. Was the system idle? Yes, between 41 to 40. That is for 1 minute, it was idle. So this is what the simulation table for 8 customers. So now we will just calculate some of the values. So let's say if we have to calculate average waiting time, then the formula is total time customers wait in queue divided by total number of queue, total number of customers. So it is like self-explainable. You can just see, you can just read the formulas and you will understand how to do it. So total time customers wait in queue. So this is the waiting time. You can just add all the values, divide by it, and you can get the final value. Now the next is probability of waiting. So it is like number of customers who waited divided by total number of customer. So how many number of, number of customers actually waited? Only just one customer. Divide by total cost number of customers, that is how much? 8, so 1 by 8 is equal to how much? 0. 0.25. Now the next is average service time. So service time is this. Add all the values, divide by 8. That is total service time divided by total number of customers. So add all the values, divide by 8. That is what your average service time will be. That is 4.25 over here. Now next is probability of idle server. So total idle time of server divided by total runtime of simulation. So what is the total idle time of server? So this is the total item side time, total idle time of server, add everything. Now what is the total run time of simulation? So when is the simulation is ending? So time service ends and the simulation is ending at 46. So this is the ending time of the simulation. So add all the values, divide by 46 is equal to 0.26. And this is what your probability of idle server. Now the next is average time between arrivals. Average time between arrivals means your inter arrival time. We are talking about this. Okay, so what we will do, we will add all the values and divide by 8 minus 1, uh, like number of arrival minus 1. Why we did this number of arrival minus 1, you can see we didn't assign any value for the first one. So this is just like 7. So we had actually 8 rows, but we have values only for 7. So this is why it is written as sum of all times between arrivals, sum of all times. That is, if you will add all this value, it will be 41. Anyway, we have also... Anyway, in the arrival time, we do the same thing. We just add all the values and this is what the final value is 41. So you can directly write 41 divided by number of arrival, 8 minus 1. Number of arrival in this is number of customer. So it is 8 minus 1. Now, the next is average waiting time of those who wait. So here, only this fourth customer is waiting. So total time is 4 and total number of customer is wait. That is again 1. That is easy. Now next is average time customer spend in the system. So this is the column, add all the values, divide by 8. That is what your average time customer spend in the system. Now next is average time customer spend in the system. We have another formula to do the same thing. So this average, so this average waiting time we have already calculated in the very first step, not very first step, but the very first formula. And this average time customer spend in the service. So add all the values, divide by 8. When you will add it, you will get the same answer which we have got it in the previous formula. So this is what we have done. Now let's wrap it up. So what is the first step? We have actually calculated the inter-arrival time distribution table. With the help of this inter-arrival time distribution table, we were able to calculate arrival time table, which actually says that when each customer is actually coming to the system. Then after that, we have computed service time distribution table. Later, we calculated service time table which actually says that how much time of service is required for each customer. And then finally, we perform the simulation table for eight customers. So this is what it is. I hope you understood to how to solve this particular type of problem. If you have any doubts, then you can write us at codewrestling at gmail.com. And thank you so much. Stay tuned with us. Do like, subscribe, share and comment. You can also write us at codewrestling at gmail.com. So happy learning. Thank you.